Surely you've eaten a Subway sandwich before. But have you ever thought about how one may code the way they charge for extras, like avocado, bacon or double meat? One interesting approach to take to solve this problem is by using a decorator pattern. But first, let's look at a couple of alternative ways that may appear as easy solutions on the surface, but will create a maintenance hell for us. The first way of how to not freaking do it is by creating classes for each permutation of sandwiches and extras. I think it's needless to explain why it is a bad idea. But just to give you food for thought, think about what happens when we, for example, would want to add a new extra or a new sandwich or the price of one of these extras changes. Another option is to make sandwich an abstract class and make it actually do some work. We can have setters for each extra, store which ones were set and then combine all the costs for those in the cost method. And in the classes that implement it, they will have to add this sum to their own implementation of the cost method. While it definitely looks more reasonable than our original approach, we are still struggling with a few potential issues. First, any addition or removal of extras will make us modify the existing code, which isn't that terrible, but it will make us violate the open-close principle, which states that classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. Secondly, if you wanted to introduce another sandwich that doesn't care about about one of these extras, it will still inherit all of these setters that it does not need. Think if you were adding a hot dog as a sandwich. Do people really put avocado on it? And finally, what if I want triple bacon on my sandwich? Right now, I can only add it once. Let's finally look at how to solve these problems with the decorator pattern. I know you still don't care, but here is the diagram that will make it easier for us to understand what we're actually going to do. A component in this diagram is our sandwich class, which we will treat as an abstract class. You'll see why in a second. Concrete component is the implementation of the sandwich, in our case, it's Subway Club, Steak and Cheese, and Chicken and Bacon Ranch. A decorator is an interesting story. It implements the sandwich abstract class to make sure it has all the same methods as the sandwich, to make it swappable with the sandwich type. But it also stores an instance of a sandwich. This will allow us to get the correct cost and description for our sandwiches with all the extras. And finally, we have the concrete decorators that implement the decorator abstract class. In our case, those would be our extras, such as avocado and bacon. Now let's look at the code. It is actually a lot simpler than it sounds. Let's define our sandwich abstract class. We will keep the cost not implemented and let the child classes implement it. But we will set the description to unknown sandwich, which ideally should never ever ever be returned, unless we have some nasty bug in the program. And then we will define the get description method to just return the description. Then we will define the subway club, steak and cheese, and chicken and bacon ranch sandwiches and make sure they implement the sandwich abstract class. Then we will implement the sandwich decorator, which implements the sandwich. In the constructor, we will accept a sandwich as an argument and keep it around. As I mentioned earlier, it will help us with the cost in the child classes. In its get description implementation, we will actually set it to throw an exception to make sure the child classes implement it and we don't get unknown sandwich if we forgot to implement it. Finally, we will implement the decorators for our extras. It's actually really, really, really easy. In the get description method, we combine the current sandwich instances description with the description of our extra. So in the bacon class, we will append bacon and in the avocado class, we will append avocado. Implement the chicken decorator yourself to allow the ability to add more chicken. And to calculate the cost, we do the same thing but with the cost method. So we sum up the cost of the sandwiches instance that we are holding and the cost of our extra. Now let's write some code to test it. First, we will create a subway club without any extras and make sure it returns the correct cost and description. Then we will create an instance of chicken and bacon ranch, wrap it in avocado and then wrap all that in bacon and print the description and cost. As you can see, it appears to work correctly. To make sure you understand why this works, let's visualize what happens after we call the cost method on our sandwich wrapped in avocado and bacon. First, we try to get the cost of the last decorator, 
bacon, but it only knows its cost of 99 cents. We have to call the cost of sandwich instance that we store and add 99 cents to it. So we call the cost method on the stored sandwich instance, which is avocado, and deal with the same problem again. It knows its own cost of 129, but not the full cost, which is an instance of chicken and bacon ranch sandwich. Finally, we got to a sandwich instance that knows its own cost and just returns it. Here we grab this 999, go back to the avocado instance, and sum 9.99 and 1.29. It now represents the cost of chicken and bacon ranch with avocado sandwich. Then we go back to bacon with this acquired knowledge and add 99 cents to the 11.28 return from avocado. Finally, we got all the costs that we needed and now we return 12.27. Hopefully it clarified things for you. If not, I would advise you to write all of this code yourself and then run it with a Python visualizer. And if you still think it's messy and we didn't improve our code that much, then watch the next video to learn about the factory pattern.